questions with uh, Commissioner Simpson and uh, Minister Oslan. Uh, we'll start with uh, short statements from both of them, and then we'll take uh, questions. Please. Good afternoon, and welcome to Norway, Commissioner uh, Simpson. It is a pleasure to have you here today. We live in uh, challenging uh, times, and there is no doubt we have several topics of mutual interest uh, to discuss. This morning, we both uh, participated at the CCUS uh, Forum, for where carbon capture and storage was a key topic. The forum uh, forces us to raise our gaze from the current energy crisis, because while energy security is an urgency, we must keep up the work to reduce emissions in line with the Paris Agreement and the Glasgow Climate Pact. And we just finished our energy dialogue a meeting where we have good discussions on several topics of mutual interests. We have discussed energy security issues, both in electricity and natural gas. Further, we exchanged views on hydrogen, offshore wind, and carbon capture and storage. We also discussed uh, progress on the EEA energy uh, legislation, and the EU is moving fast uh, to reach its uh, targets. Uh, which are necessary to undertake the green transition. And I have to say, I was looking forward to introduce the Commissioner to my beautiful home county, Telemark, this afternoon. We have planned to visit the uh, Vinje uh, power plant and Norsham's uh, cement plant in Brevik, where our carbon capture facility is being built. However, the weather forecast didn't allow us to travel by helicopter, and uh, in a way, that's good, uh, I think, because uh, it's raining and uh, a dry uh, weather, uh, uh, wet weather, so I think it will be good. Instead of uh, going that trip, uh, I will show the Commissioner more of uh, Oslo. After the press conference, we will visit uh, Havslund uh, Oslo Celsius. They are developing the world's, world's first full-scale carbon uh, capture project for waste to energy, where up to 400,000 tons of CO2 can be captured every year. I see the EU as a partner in the further, further developing these technologies, and I look forward to further dialogue on these and many more uh, topics. The EE a agreement is a very important frame for us and the energy dialogue is a very useful comp complementary process in the energy uh, field. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And um, I start by uh, commenting the weather. Weather-wise, I feel like home. This is normal. This is end of October. And... Uh, and uh, um, I truly appreciate that we still have a, a possibility to visit also some sites. But the reason why I'm here is uh, the annual EU-Norway dialogue. And this, uh, this time carries a particular meaning. We have met against the background of um, an unfolding energy crisis due to the Russian war of aggression to Ukraine, in which both the EU and Norway share concerns. And the ministerial dialogue took place while the EU CCUS forum was happening in parallel. Uh, it is the first time ever the forum is organized outside the Brussels, and we felt that meeting in Oslo would be a strong symbol of our cooperation in clean energy technologies. I am very grateful to Minister Osland um, for making these meetings possible and for your kind hospitality. Um, in our dialogue, we had good discussions on the many areas of common interest and on the joint challenges, both the short-term ones and those in the medium term. The EU and Norway are like-minded partners. We share a common market. We are allies. We depend on and complement each other for our prosperity and security. This relation has become even stronger and more intense during the current energy crisis. The European Union's vast market of 450 million consumers is home to many Norwegian companies, which develop their, their businesses, investments, and create jobs. Norway has become the most important natural gas supplier for the EU, 
representing 25% of all EU natural gas imports. As the recent events have shown, we have a common interest in market stability and energy security, including on the protection of critical energy infrastructure. Norway and the EU can help each other withstand the current crisis and grasp together the opportunities to become more resilient, greener and energy secure, building a stronger friendship. In our meeting, I have explained to Minister the measures the EU has been taking to mitigate the effects of the energy crisis on our consumers and businesses, and in particular our recent emergency proposal to avoid excessively high and volatile gas prices and to ensure solidarity in case of disruption on the EU market. I thank Norway and uh, Minister Osland uh, for doing the maximum possible to increase the delivery of natural gas to Europe in our time of need. In June, Prime Minister Karl Storer committed to deliver to the EU additional nine PCM by the end of 2022, and we are on track towards achieving that goal. Yet the European Union continues to pay a very high price for its energy supplies, and uh, this puts uh, households, businesses, and our economy under a great strain. I have explained that the EU will need to introduce further measures to reduce the consumers' energy bills already this winter and to prepare better for the next one. In the end, the EU and Norway have a joint interest in ensuring economic stability and energy security in Europe. And we must address this crisis together in a spirit of solidarity and mutual interest. And we agreed on the importance of to search solutions in line with the spirit behind the joint declaration issued uh, by your Prime Minister and uh, President von der Leyen in Prague in the beginning of um, October. And beside energy security and security of supply, our discussions today have focused on how to enhance our cooperation on energy transition and clean innovative technologies. Uh, this is where our medium-term interest lies. The current energy crisis does not, does not change um, the European Union's determination to decarbonize our economy. On the contrary, EU's measures proposed under the Repower EU plan in May aim to accelerate the deployment of renewable energy, the development of energy efficiency measures, and to create a framework for decarbonized gases, including hydrogen in the EU. Um, the EU is undertaking all efforts to translate these objectives into legislation, and our co-legislators are working in full speed right now. And we have also discussed how we can strengthen our cooperation on clean technologies and possibly extend it into new areas. And earlier today, at the CCUS forum, I underlined the need to use innovative technologies to decarbonize hard to abate sectors, such as cement and steel. Norway is in a unique position to develop a services market for carbon capture and storage in the short and to medium term perspective, and this is a very promising area of cooperation. We have also discussed energy and climate diplomacy, and I look forward to seeing Norway's contribution to the upcoming COP27 in Egypt and the role it wants to play to accelerate green growth. It was a very positive and friendly meeting in which uh, we consolidated a common vision on how to tackle the crisis and reinforce our cooperation in many areas of common interest. And we will continue this work closely together. Thank you. Then we'll open up for questions. Uh, as the press conference is streamed online, you will get a microphone from one of my colleagues. We'll start with uh, the Norwegian news agency, Antebea, followed by Norwegian broadcaster, NRK. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Marius Helge from uh, Antebea. Uh, I have a question for Commissioner Simpson. Um, your friend, uh, Tarja Åsland, here uh, always tells us that um, the Norwegian government are not selling any gas. It's the Norwegian companies that sells the gas so that they cannot dictate the prices. Uh, but why are EU so interested in talking to Norway about this issue then? Uh, what kind of contributions do you think Norway could uh, make to lowering the power prices? Well, this is very true. Uh, also for EU, this is not European Commission or Commissioner Simpson who is buying gas, but these are our companies who have uh, contracts with uh, producers. 
Uh, what we uh, try to do right now is to give them certainty and predictability for years to come and also to send a clear message um, to our market participants uh, what are our um, um, challenges and uh, how well we are already prepared for, uh, for this winter. Uh, and in this regard, Norway has been a great help so far in 2022, European Union, EU27. We have been able to replace all the gas volumes that Russia has cut with alternative suppliers. And Norway, a country that is uh, connected to the EU via pipelines, has, uh, has been uh, providing additional uh, volumes to us. At the same time, we both agree that these current unstable um, and unsustainable price levels uh, will have an impact to our economy. Um, they do have also impact to the other sectors. Well, the most visible one is uh, power generation. And uh, we have to well, uh, find solutions that uh, help us to, to um, calm down the gas market in the way that, uh, that our consumers and businesses um, can keep operating and will not lose their level playing field against other global uh, market regions. If I can follow up, uh, first of all, I will say uh, we respect the, 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 the work uh, EU uh, and the Commission uh, working. We are uh, also deeply concerned in, in Norway about the high prices for gas and electricity. We are uh, in common boat, I think, uh, for, for, the, for the future and talking about how we can be a reliable uh, exporter of gas uh, next year and the coming years is very important. And I think also we have important uh, discussion and dialogues on how we can uh, get a more stable and uh, reliable market uh, function. Uh, if you are also so worried about the higher prices, uh, why don't you agree to a price cap? Because uh, the Norwegian government don't sell gas, as uh, you started with. We don't sell gas. It's the companies in the Norwegian continental shelf uh, that uh, sell the gas. And I think uh, the most reasonable uh, way to, to handle the, the future and also the special situation uh, is to, to, to have a commercial framework uh, where, where the companies meet and uh, having contracts uh, for, for gas and energy. Then we'll go on with NRK, followed by Dagens Næringsliv. Anton Lier, NRK, um, Mr. Simmons, Simpson. By 2030, Norway must have uh, cut emissions by a large percentage. But should Norway look for and find new oil and gas areas after 2030 to ensure gas deliveries to Europe in the future as well? By 2030, we will also significantly cut our CO2 emissions. So we will prioritize uh, renewables. We will accelerate the um, um, build-up of renewables. And where we can, we will replace uh, fossil fuels with renewables. Unfortunately, um, this is uh, not doable to achieve climate neutrality by 2030. Our target is 2050, and this is an ambitious target. And, uh, and there will be sectors who will consume uh, fossil fuels even after 2030. Um, saying that... I think that our global outreach is also important. Uh, Europe is responsible only for 9% of global emissions, CO2 emissions. So we have to well share our best knowledge how you can replace uh, fossil fuels with uh, clean alternatives also with our global partners. But, uh, but 2030 and afterwards, some of gas, some of uh, oil products will be needed. Then Dagens Næringsliv, followed by uh, Reuters. Thank you. Maria Melgor from Dagens Næringsliv. Um, the EU Commission has proposed a temporary dynamic price cap for gas and said it will discuss it with its um, re reliable partners, and I suppose that's Norway. So I'm wondering, was this specifically discussed uh, with Tarjeli and Osland or with the 
Prime Minister Söder, and if so, what was the response from Norway? Was there any new signals or the same that it's uh, the companies who are selling gas? I strongly believe that our trusted partners are worth uh, that uh, they are informed uh, about our next steps in advance. And of course, uh, our energy dialogue was also dedicated to the um, emergency measures that the European Union has um, adopted uh, since the well, since um, the very start of the, of the crisis. And, and indeed, two days ago in uh, Luxembourg, we discussed this dynamic price corridor and the capping TTF with our energy ministers. No decisions are made yet, uh, but this is our obligation to calm down the ma market and to avoid possible manipulations um, that will impact all our market participants. And, um, if you have followed the um, developments of TTF pricing and benchmark, then, uh, then you know that, uh, that uh, it was designed for exclusively for pipeline, and, and now uh, our um, dependence on LNG has significantly, significantly grown, and that's why we have to, um, and we have agreed that we will, by the 31st of March, create more representative EU-level alternative gas benchmark. And uh, we tasked ACER, our agency, um, so that they can um, use data of, uh, of, um, of market participants and uh, they, they can build up this more transparent, predictable benchmark for gas trade. Just to follow up, so if I understand correctly, this specific um, uh, temporary dynamic price cap was discussed, and what do you feel about Norway's response to that this is uh, something that the EU Commission is working with? We have set up a dedicated task force that works uh, um, to find a solution that helps us to stabilise the gas price, but also takes into account the, the views of both um, counterparts. And, uh, and this task force is operational. Um, today's meeting and energy dialogue was not meant to replace this task force uh, work. Um, so I share the latest from our side, but, uh, but uh, this is work happening in parallel. Reuters. Yes, uh, 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 as I said uh, earlier, I, uh, I fully respect the way that the uh, EU uh, and the Commission uh, is working. It's a difficult time, and I think the, the task force uh, shall continue to talk and have the dialogue. It's important uh, to, to, uh, to uh, uh, keep on the dialogue to, to uh, see if there are any solutions for the critical situation. And so we also we can understand each other. I think the, the, the dialogue is important. And I'm strongly convinced that there are solutions yes. for this difficult situation. Can you say which one? No. <laughs> no Tomorrow's but, news. <laughs> but I, I think the Norwegian government, uh, uh, and we have been very clear that uh, we uh, want that uh, a, a solution will uh, find place in a commercial uh, framework. And that is uh, still our message. But I think dialogue is important in this uh, difficult time. Uh, and I fully respect the way that the uh, Commission and the uh, EU member states are working with uh, uh, the, the, the crisis they uh, uh, have every day on the energy field. Then Reuters, followed by Bloomberg. Um, yeah, a question to uh, you, uh, Ms. Simpson. Um, could the Commission propose a price cap before the November 24 meeting of uh, the energy ministers? You said you need a mandate, but can you do anything before that on the price cap proposal? And then also, I guess, to, to both of you, um, as you stressed, you have the dialogue, but it seems to be both, you know, one wants a price cap, you want a commercial agreement. Are you talking past one another? I'm just, if you could just explain it to me one more time. Sorry. Well, the Commission can propose uh, um, additional emergency measures. They have to be temporary and uh, address this current emergency. 
Um, what uh, ministers uh, asked from me two days ago when we met um, uh, was more specific analysis how this price cap will secure our supply and, uh, and how we will um, design it. So uh, technical work is ongoing in this regard. But does that mean you can propose, make a proposal before the next meeting or when do you expect to have a proposal finished? When we will make the proposal, we, may, we will also make an announcement that we have done so. But is it possible before November 24th or is that a deadline for you? Under these emergency measures, uh, everything is possible. Okay. Then Bloomberg, followed by Montel. Oh, I had another question. A uh, question for both of you. Uh, did you qu discuss uh, questions of security of the energy assets on the Norwegian continental shelf and uh, between Norway and Europe, the rest of Europe? Strategic infrastructure, yes. but you have done yes. it to protect... Uh, uh, we, 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 we didn't discuss that in, uh, in details, but uh, I think the Commissioner will uh, see to Norway as a reliable and, uh, and a trusted uh, deliverer of uh, gas in these days also. And we have uh, uh, increased uh, the security and uh, the tilstedeværelse. Uh, on the Norwegian continental shelf, and we're following up the security situation, of course, to be also in this difficult uh, situation, uh, a reliable uh, exporter of gas to the European market. Then we have Montel, followed by Energy Watch. Hi, Herman Mostry from Montel. I have a question regarding power exports from Norway. <clears throat> So there have been neighboring uh, countries, TSOs, that have expressed clear concern regarding uh, Norwegian uh, the, the plans to limit cross-border flows out of Norway. Do you share that concern? And um, do you think these plans should be abolished? I truly believe that uh, larger electricity markets, regional markets, are beneficial to all the participants because they allow to well, accommodate more renewables and uh, overall they bring benefits to all the consumers. And uh, this is shared understanding in EU and in, uh, our, among our neighbours who are connected uh, via electricity uh, cables with us. And, uh, and against this, I do believe that all the decisions are made um, knowing what are the benefits, but also um, analysed against uh, the security of supply issues. Then Energy Watch. Hi, my name is Kerstin Nelson from Energy Watch. Uh, in the EU, the, states, uh, the EU states are now initiating a common procurement and negotiations for gas um, when you initiate these types of deals. Indeed, uh, we plan to set up a NH platform which will, on behalf of our companies, um, pool together the certain volume of, uh, of um, um, consumption. And uh, this is our proposal to member states that it should cover at least 15, 1.5% of our underground gas storage capacity that equals to 13.8 billion cubic meters of gas. It might be bigger if our neighboring countries who are welcome to join this platform, uh, Ukraine, Moldova, Western Balkan countries are willing to participate. And uh, by doing so, we will have a chance to avoid situation where different EU companies will bid against each other and by doing so, we'll drive the prices up. Um, we will also allow those companies to form a consortium so that they can um, agree on the transport lines, because this is a huge logistical challenge. It is not just buying gas, but also to transporting it to these member states, to every and each member state, and some of them do have, um, well, don't have borderline, they are landlocked, um, they are dependent on the neighbours' um, um, 
infrastructure and and uh, and uh, the um, free capacity of LNG terminals. So uh, this is a a operation where Commission can provide support to companies and member states uh, to agree that this kind of um, support from our side is necessary because after this heating season, our underground gas storage is empty. It is right now more than 90% full, but we will consume this gas over the winter to heat our homes. And then we have to be ready to fill it again without Russian gas. Thank you. I have one more question um, about sustainability, which you mentioned earlier. Uh, how will Norway and, or how will EU and Norway work together to achieve um, a sustainable energy future? Can I start, maybe? Uh, we are uh, several uh, issues and, uh, and uh, common interests in uh, a lot of issues uh, as uh, building out more of the renewable potential uh, in Norway and in the, in the EU also. Uh, we have a great working together in the NSEC and the North Sea uh, Basin, who can be really important uh, in the future for uh, uh, offshore wind. Uh, we are discussing hydrogen. Uh, we are discussing uh, carbon capture and storage. And I think these matters are really meaningful in the, in the sustainable uh, society. So I think uh, in the future, maybe even Norway and EU have more to discuss together to solve the climate uh, challenges and to, to get a, a safe and a, a reliable energy uh, uh, market uh, in both EU and in uh, Norway. I need, to, I need to ask one follow-up question. I believe also peace is very important for sustainability. Peace is also, uh, yes, of course. This is actually the third time since September when me and Minister Asland are meeting. So uh, we met in uh, Dublin at the format of uh, North Sea Energy Cooperation. And indeed, uh, we do hope that, uh, that this is an uh, offshore wind that uh, helps us to achieve our 2030 very high renewable targets. Um, this is also North Sea region, uh, what we regard as a... Um, very promising region where we can start producing hydrogen. And by 2030, we hope that uh, some and very significant part of our industrial uh, consumption uh, will be covered by renewable hydrogen. And on top of that, we are sharing the same market. And, uh, and the hours and days where our electricity consumption is covered by renewables are the hours and days where our businesses and households will receive electricity with competitive prices. So uh, these are the energy-related issues. On top of that, um, we are facing these challenges right now due to the fact that Russia is using their fossil fuels to manipulate with European markets. And they are also fighting another war against Ukraine. This is a real war with uh, real casualties. And we discussed how together we can help Ukraine to repair their civil infrastructure because in the past few weeks we have seen that Russia is using weapons to harm district heating plants, to target specific electricity transmission lines. And this is very difficult um, to repair them unless you have specific equipment to do so. And, um, well, this is common task to, to allow those Ukrainians who are still living in Ukraine um, to do so and not to face a situation that they don't have electricity access, no heat. Well, this is a challenge uh, that, uh, that is um, on our shoulders to help them to repair, of course, um, the work that Ukrainian engineers are doing is um, valuable and um, I truly appreciate uh, their bravery and dedication. And by that, uh, we just, uh, I, I will uh, say that we fully support the initiative to, to help the Ukrainian uh, during the winter to have uh, electricity uh, access. It's very important. And uh, 
I hope some companies in Norway have some equipment uh, the, that they can handle over to, to Ukraine in these days. Uh, so we will uh, follow up as good as we can. Thank you. Then we have to wrap up. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.